Well, hey, good day there, everybody. This is Joe Van Cleve, and this is Kevin Kittle. Welcome back, Kevin. I'm glad you guys come back to see our channel here. And, uh, well, we have something here. What is this? This is a nice, interesting brown leather case, a satchel bag. Yeah, leather case. So a satchel bag for, you could have paper. Got okay, paper in here? Documents, secret documents. Absolutely. Yeah. But for us, it's just smuggling and ultra portable. Oh, smuggling and ultra portable. Yes, exactly. Wow. So <laughs> that's a nice case and it looks like it has little feet on the bottom, right? Everything. Yeah. It is a nice looking case. Yeah. Um, comparable to, you almost think, oh, is that a Smith Corona uh, uh, Skyrider? Or yeah. is that uh -huh. uh, something else like a Hermes Baby right. in their satchel case? Yeah. Or something like that? But it's not. Oh. The reveal is that this is a royal light in this case a royal dart a royal dart right which is the um montgomery wards branded uh model of the royal royal light ah very good well let's pull it out yeah let's see. and it's nice somebody put in here a piece of masonite which actually makes it pretty nice to pull this out yes were the masonites were related to the masons do you think mm, i don't know could have been yeah yeah and then so here we have this is oh, a yes, royal yes yes dart that is a nice machine i like the textured finish it's a finer texture than a typical smith corona yeah real fine see. texture yeah. dark nice, gray yeah deep charcoal gray color yeah, yeah and all that and the keys have this beautiful kind of off-white color with the uh, dark gray maybe black uh, lettering right yeah. and it's not like some uh, typewriters where the keys start going yellow uh -huh. it's not really it's just this it's not quite a bright white it's this uh, off-white color because yes. the knobs match perfectly wow this is cool so um I noticed on the back here it says Royal McBee Netherlands right here right and that's because the Royal Royalite came from the Netherlands it was an original design in the uh, approximately early 50s. Ah. I think Royal bought them in like uh, the company in about 1954 or 55. Okay. And I believe it's called a Halberg was the brand. Ah. And they made some and you can find some on the typewriter database, Halbergs and stuff. Ah. And Royal decided to buy them because they were looking to uh, find a small lightweight portable mm. to compete with the Skyrider mm. which and the other ones that were small right, right. and the ultra portable, what like, we call no, or ultra portable, right. like Letter of 22s or Letter of 22s. Right. And rather than uh, design it themselves, they found this typewriter, which was not well known mm. at that time, and um, bought the company. And then these, all of the Royal Lights were manufactured in that company. Wow. And that company actually then, uh, manufacturing facility, made other Royal models as well as time went on. Oh, interesting. So, Royal, this is the Dart. This is a royal dart, and it was called a dart because it was Montgomery Ward's uh, name. Right. But it was still a royal light, and, and the difference between this and a regular royal light, as far as what you normally see, is in the ribbon cover. Uh, this has this nice pop off, just this part of the ribbon cover. Oh uh, yes. And the uh, regular royal light, the whole ribbon cover was more f uh, rounded across the top, I see. and it would come down on the sides, and uh, you would pop that part I off. See. Um, this there has was a beautiful style to it. It really is. Yeah, yeah. it really does. One thing about the Royal Lights that seems to be what everybody talks about is that, oh, they're not that good at typewriter. Oh. They always get denigrated. Right. Oh, if you're going to get an ultra portable in nowadays, yeah. you want to get a Skyrider right, right. or a Letter of 22 right. or, or um, something else. Royal Light seems to always be, oh, they're not that great at typewriters. Right, right. And I don't, in my own opinion, yeah. what I've found and done some research on, I don't think that's true. I think ah. part of it had to do with and I've mentioned this to some other people, is in marketing. Uh -huh. Smith Corona did a fabulous job of marketing the Skyrider. You yeah, know, on fits in your jet, sure. you got the jet set, the 707 yeah. was out. Oh, yeah. You know, it was fantastic. Royal came out this, okay, and the reason they called it light, because it was supposed to be lightweight compared to the uh, Quiet Deluxe, right. which it is, it's quite a bit smaller. But unfortunately, using that name of Royal Light, it sounds like oh, it's less is, than it's less than yeah. so it's a lightweight it's a time diminutive and that's yeah. what um, uh, a few people with their blogs have mentioned about the royals eh, it's okay typewriter but you wouldn't want to use it for heavy typing or yeah. real writing right. you know it's just a really uh, not that great of a typewriter right and in my experience with this one 
And I think that's one reason why maybe Montgomery Ward's changed it and called it the Dart. Yeah. Is to get away from that yeah. light name. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is it's actually a very good typewriter. I ah. think it's pretty, and, good. and I think it's in the way of very good. Well, okay, Kevin. Let's take a look at the features of the Royal Dart. Really, a nice typewriter. It's a good size carriage. You can fit nice eight and a half by eleven with it. You've got the uh, paper bail, which is pretty standard. Yep. With it's a nice solid rod. Yeah. No rollers. It has uh, tabs that you can pick up on either side, essentially. Yeah, I like that. Nice that. And then it has the uh, feed roller release. Uh -huh. Also picks up the paper ah, bail. Nice. Which nice. is good for, uh, as they recommend in some uh, typing uh, instruction manuals, to release your feed rollers and then put your paper in yes. and then that'll help that feed underneath the paper bale yeah, yeah. which is kind of a nice thing and as on the same side you have a one-sided carriage release right. nothing on this side right. but it does have on the left side over on this side you do have a nice carriage lock you oh, yeah. slide that easy over. to see easy to find it's not hidden like a lot of them are right and it's not tricky like on the Remingtons you got to do this and do that yeah, yeah. it's just right there and you just pop it up and it releases it and away you go nice nice and then you have your here you have your uh, line space adjustment, which is one, one and a half, and two. two, and then you have your re your variable variable on top. On top. Right. Doesn't have an infinite variable, which a lot of the ultra portables don't. Right. So then you put it. It's an indexed variable. So okay. back there. Uh -huh. The carriage release lever uh, has an interesting action to it. Yeah, it has this. Uh, Tilting action, I guess yeah, you could call yeah. it like that. Now, the lever itself will tilt down on a pivot there when you put it into its case nicely, but when you return, it tilts over to the side and then moves the carriage over oh, that way, okay. which is really a nice feature. Um, it, it's a little unusual feel when you first yeah, start it, yeah. but it goes right along with the old uh, larger typewriters yes. where you would push it and then kind of just right. release and let go and let it finish carrying all the way across yeah. like that to make it fast. I notice it has a sculpted shape, almost like your left hand could, the fingers kind of go right in there naturally and then right. slide right off. And when you're typing with it, you get used to that motion. Ah. It's, and you're going, wow, I really like that motion. And then yeah. it has a pin that's right there that prevents, once you've tilted it over, prevents you from coming down so you're not going to scrape across the top of the oh, typewriter. Nice. And I notice the finish is really nice. like it. Yeah, it's never been scratched or yeah, anything. And, yeah, and so that works really well. That's that's very unusual. Very cool. And then, like you say, it'll fold down for storage in the case. Right. So yeah. that and it just and it just pushes the case, pushes it down. Very good. Now in the back, you got your standard margin settings, and then it has a nice paper oh, yeah. support. Almost dart shaped. Almost dart shaped. <laughs> <laughs> it says right there. So <laughs> right. Like I like the logo. Yeah. And so there's obviously no tabs. No tabs. Right. And, and, and uh, this is just a structural member on the case okay. here that just stiffens up everything nicely. Right. And so the keyboard. The keyboard is standard without yeah. a one or a plus or minus or an exclamation point. Right. And uh, so if you wanted to make your interrobang, yes. you'd have to uh, uh, make it with a question mark and then an apostrophe, uh, just like you would make yeah. your exclamation mark yeah. with a period and, and a, an apostrophe. An apostrophe. Yeah, I like the styling, but I, I like the, uh, actually the edges of the space bar have this wonderful little radius that kind of matches the whole curvature of the ribbon cover and these it has just it sort of consistent style to it that's really nice very nice yeah, yeah. and it's a it's a nice feeling keyboard you have a standard backspace here but uh, and a margin release but the margin release also doubles ah. as a anti-jam mechanism ah, a key jammer a d jammer d jammer yeah. yeah very nice and then you have independent uh, carriage control shift mm -hmm. There, they're independent, and then your carry your lock is only on one side, but this one's a little bit worn, so you got to oh. kind of press it and okay. to get it to catch. Okay, I mean a little bit of adjustment there right, right. for the age of the typewriter. Very sweet, very sweet. And, uh, so the spacing of the keyboard uh, compared to the machine we reviewed last time was the Maritza. It looks like you have a little more space on the left side between the A and the Z and the and the shift uh, keys. I think you do. Yeah, and it's got a very nice feel. Um, I, I did some uh, typing. Uh, I typed uh, out of the uh, booklet called The Flapper, mm. which is from 1929, yeah. a typing contest oh, book. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, which is just a narrative text without a lot of special characters and, and, and quotations. And you just go through and it typed a whole page on it, and it types very well. It doesn't have any touch adjustment, right. but it has a really nice feel. And you can see there's no touch adjustment lever, right, right. and it's only a one color ribbon. Right, right. And uh, but it just was a really nice feel. I didn't fatigue much at all, and it seemed to type really well. I was really well, 
like the way it typed. Now this has a cloth, woven cloth, uh, type bar support instead right. of a like rubber tubing or whatever. Or, yeah, it looks or, like almost like a braided sheathing yeah, type of thing. Yeah, yeah. So it's around. And there's maybe a piece of metal in between. It's yeah. like a, a stiff or a flexible aluminum or something inside the core of that. But yeah. It, yeah, that's different. It's very nice. So it's not going to stick like some of those where they have the rubber tube and yeah, it, it gets sticky. It's sticky, right? So yeah. it's going to be real quiet. And it, it is. What's really nice about this typewriter is it's, it's really quiet. Oh, okay. And then, of course, I've been helped that by lining the uh, oh, uh, yes. metal surfaces with uh, oh, yes. uh, self-adhesive felt oh, okay. from the craft store. And you also did the inside of the body inside side the body and, and on the bottom, right? The bottom. It has a bottom nice. uh, sheet metal Very plate. Good. Now, it also has this spring up front uh, at the print position. Right. And it's similar to uh, same action as uh, you see with like a half U yeah. piece of wire that some like type Like the brother are, machines have. Right, the brother's machines have. Yeah, and it's just nice. a way of absorbing some of the impact. Oh. And uh, and I think that helps keep it a little bit on the quieter side. It's a nice touch. And along the uh, curve here, uh, the cylinder, I guess they call it. The segment? The seg Well, yeah, the, the plate up here. The, the plate, the, yes, above yeah, that, the, right. The, uh, the, the face of the tie bar strikes uh, to stop it. There, there's not that much wear. You can see the little wear marks are pretty light. So Yeah, and that's probably because of that, that, that plate spring. really helps yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. And if you notice that the segment's really uh, well defined. Oh yes. You know, the yeah. slots they are just it's well machined, well made. And so these use the universal spools, right? Universal spools, yes, a standard uh, almost every typewriter and it uses, American at least. And it uses the uh, does it use grommets for It does use a uh, eyelet eyelet for uh, for reversing. Yeah. Okay. Even though it probably does put a little pressure on it but the eyelet is what if finishes it, it, it. And, okay. and pushes it okay. over because it's a fairly narrow in the yeah. fork there. Well, it looks like somebody is going to have to test this machine out. I think you should. <laughs> okay, let's do it. The only flaw with this typewriter, and it seems to be a manufacturing, I think more of an adjustment rather than manufacturing, is that it's a little light on the bottom uh, part of the characters. Okay. And that seems to be quite consistent uh -huh. that way. And I think it's mostly just a, what would we call it, on feet, on okay. foot. So we're going to try to do that later we'll, on. Later on, yeah. we'll try doing that. Okay. Oh. I like it. That's nice. It has a nice touch to it. It has a nice touch to it. Um, I don't notice much skipping. Uh, you can be a little fast with it where you crowd the letters a little bit. Yeah, I was doing that a little bit here. I was not using a good technique. Part of it is my position here is a little awkward, but yeah, it's it's a nice feel. Yeah, and it, it, it doesn't seem to have much skipping and issues man, at all. And it's quiet. It is very quiet. Man. If you notice, we remember from the Maritza, which had a nice sound, but it has a definite typewriter thwack, thwack, now, thwack, thwack how sound. How is the uh, platinum? more the platinum <laughs> feels <laughs> pretty good, that rubber. It's not bad. It's yeah. on the hard side. Yeah. Um, but, but it still feels like rubber. It doesn't it still feel feels like, like rubber. Yeah, it doesn't feel like wood. And we're not getting much shading in the characters as no, far as a, a, a double print. And uh, so that's nice. Excellent. Now you're not using your... I know. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm not your, used your to anti, it. Your, your anti-jam key. I'm not used to it. <laughs> that's sweet. And I can see where that rotating effect can be very easy to get used to. And if you notice when you do some quick typing on there, let's yeah. say if you're doing a, a, a shorter line and back and forth, Oh, there's your anti jam. There you go. go, just like that. And then you do your carriage return. You notice how smooth that carriage. Oh, is. I know. And I noticed I find myself just hitting the top edge of it. Is right. all you need to. That's all you need. You yeah. know, you don't have to like center your hand on the on the main part of the hand of the lever. Just kind of flick the top edge, and it it works really well. That's sweet. That's a nice machine. I think uh, if I was a little bit more concerted. Uh, to use a proper typing technique, uh, I think this is uh, quite usable for lengthy typing. I really think you could. I mean, you even have the the uh, little notches in the uh, guide there for doing your penciling, and it has some uh, card eyes that come up for holding a, a card stock or a piece of card and all that. Yeah, that is an easy carriage to move. And I really think you could do. Unlike what I've read in some of the other blogs right. that people talked about it, they talk about, oh, it was really mainly meant for light usage yeah. and stuff like that. It's, I really think you could do a, a lot of heavy duty typing. No, like I the can only see that. problem is the adjustment where it's getting a little shadowing yes. on the characters, uh, where the lower half is lighter than the top half. Right, right. Um, and it's pretty amazing when you think about it that yeah. this machine was basically thrown away. 
Oh, oh, so you have a story to tell about this machine. This machine okay, literally look. was in the trash. Somebody Seriously. had thrown this into a trash. A friend of mine up in uh, Trinidad, Colorado. Um, now, this is the funny part about the story. <laughs> There's always a good story. There's That's always a good story about this. <laughs> so he calls me up, up, or did he send me? He might have sent me a text. No, I think he actually called me. He says, hey, I found this uh, typewriter you know, while I was dumpster diving, and I thought you, you, know, you might be interested. So you have a friend who dumpster dives. So dumpster diving, <laughs> yes. Now, I didn't really think twice about it. I said, oh, yeah, sure, that sounds great, you know. A because, parts machine, right, or something, you know. Well, I didn't even think about that. I oh. thought dumpster diving, I thought, well, that's what I used to do. Oh. I mean, I, when you grow up poor. In, you, your, in your younger days. In your younger days, yeah. you, like, you do a lot of d dumpster diving. Right. You, know, where you just check things out. I used yeah. to have a routine, you know, <laughs> uh, on Sunday mornings when everybody else was at church. Oh. I went around to all the stores that were closed on Sunday uh -huh. and checked out what was in the dumpsters. I found all kinds of interesting things as a kid. Cool. And uh, so I didn't even think twice about it when he said that. I said, yeah, sounds great. So then he brings this down. And here's this machine. And I washed it, but it, it wasn't bad at all. Wow. Somebody had just thrown decided to throw it out. They didn't Amazing. donate it. They just threw it out. Wow. And um, so then I cleaned it up and oiled it a little bit and, and checked it out, make sure it works. And like I said, it really hasn't needed anything. Wow. And it's a, when you look at the uh, condition yeah. of the... Uh, Oh yeah, rails and stuff oh, I like know. that. They're really clean. They're very clean. I like the way the metal ra the rails are anodized. Also, yeah, it's, you it's, know, because a lot of those rails are just steel, bare steel, right? Right. They, and so there's no rust on this machine that at is all. Nice. Very and, sweet. And uh, so then I just adopted from there. I said, oh, that's that's great. It's been a really good typewriter. Wow, what a great story. <laughs> <laughs> From the dumpster to the castle. <laughs> ah, there we go, yes. <laughs> well, this was a lot of fun, Kevin. I, I really like this machine. And, uh, you know, I haven't really been privy to all the gossip about these royals. Well, that's what they talked about. Yeah. It, you know, they talked about how the royal lights, and we talked, I mean, you and I have yeah. talked about this, yeah. that, that, you know, it's a light machine. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, by, and the name, I think, did disservice yeah. to the typewriter. Right, right. Um, the original uh, name of the machine, uh, I didn't discover in my research just the brand. I'm pretty, okay. pretty sure it's Halberg. Right. But I, I think Royal should have done better marketing, and mm. maybe they, you know, they thought of this maybe as a secondary market mm -hmm. rather than their primary right. business machine market right. and stuff. Right. Whereas Smith Corona really went after the uh, mm. uh, home user right. and the executive on the road, yeah. on the run, on the run, <laughs> <laughs> and because uh, yeah. it's. And I really think that, uh, and well, I guess in some respects, that's good for us because yeah. you can pick up a Royal Light probably cheaper than you can pick up a Skyrider. Oh, yeah. And they're readily available. You see them all the time on... Yeah. Um, I, I like the, the touch of it. Yeah, and it, to me, it feels it's just as good as a Skyrider. And, and actually, uh, and I know there were like three or four different iterations of the Skyrider, but the one I have, this is certainly prettier than the one than the Skyrider I have. Right. No and, doubt about it. And probably the prettiest of these, of the Royal Light style, is where they call it the El Dorado. It's uh -huh. black and gold. Yeah. Um, not gold plated, but just gold painted. Right. And they did, actually, this was in production up through... Mm, I'll say in the early 70s. I'm not sure when wow. they stopped. They made wow. it for a long time. Wow. Um, so it was successful as far as a product for yeah. Royal. Yeah. It just uh, probably wasn't as success successful as the Skyrider as far as the uh, numbers produced. Well, I can certainly say that this would be a ultra portable typewriter that you would want to consider in your collection if you had to, right? Have one. I think so. What I like about it, and we've used it when we've gone to some place where you may be using your. Uh, thermal typewriter because it's yes. so quiet. Oh, wow. this and, is a quiet one. And you bring oh, this yeah. in here and you know and it's really it's louder than a thermal typewriter. Now, granted, it's really quiet. Granted you've done some improvements to it, but I would say this is quieter than any of my ultra portables. The Rocket and the Skyrider are both louder than this. Right. You and know? then and like any of those too. Yeah. You can take the time and put some right. uh, felt on it and yeah. the, and the felt does make a it difference. It does make a difference, right? Yeah. So, on the spectrum of 1 to 10 of ultra portables, where do you think this falls in at? One to ten. We uh, talked last week about the Maritza Princess. Yeah, it was like kind it of like like right in the middle. Five to six or five whatever. Five to six. Yeah. I would go because it has a much better feel than the Maritza. Yeah. Um, it's smoother. Uh, the touch probably feels a little bit lighter because of that. Uh, the key spacing is better. So those of us with little larger hands, we yep. feel a little more comfortable on it. Yep. Um, the... Uh, Imprint is just as good. Right now I've just got a regular nylon ribbon in it, so there's yeah. no silk ribbon in That's there, so the though. silk would be even darker. And um, the uh, once it's adjusted 
with that one adjustment of the on foot and stuff like that, which is actually relatively easy to oh, yeah. to get with this here, you know, just that right right inside there yeah. and there yeah. where you can actually get to it fairly easy. And we may not even have to take off the shell. Ah. Um, I would personally, I would rate it up higher. That I would go probably maybe seven to about eight, seven, seven, yeah, seven to yeah. eight, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, easily, you could um, type long. Yeah, uh, sessions of typing and writing. I can see that. You know what it reminds me of is, um, it reminds me of my brother Charger Eleven versus like the Webster variation of the, of the brother, because the the Charger Eleven that I had didn't have a touch adjustment, right? But the Webster does. But the one without the touch adjustment felt better. Yeah. And this one doesn't have a touch adjustment, but it just feels right. Yeah, so evidently they yeah. aren't putting that extra spring for yeah. the touch adjustment that, yeah. that, that, you, that causes you to have more resistance or less resistance. Right, right. And so they just let the typewriter be. Yeah. The only disadvantage I see to this typewriter um, is that it is a little bit on the taller side, so yeah. fitting into your satchel sure. bag. Sure. Um, you really need to take it out of its case. Right. Uh, you can't really drop the whole satchel, the case itself. Into, in your shoulder bag. into your so shoulder you, bag. You would carry it without the satchel. Just you carry it without put it in it, a yeah. shoulder bag. Yeah, and I can see the styling of the ribbon cover is pretty, but it does give it that extra height here, that lip. Right. Know. I think that the yeah the original one might have been slightly lower over yeah. top of the keys, but uh, it's not that much high. I mean, it is a little taller than the fingers of the uh, knobs here, but not that much. And then the weight of it, uh, with the case we measured. Uh, 10 pounds, yeah. 8 ounces, and more or less. Yeah. And then, so you figure there's a couple of pounds, even though the cases are light, right. they do weigh a couple of sure, pounds. Sure. So this is probably about a 9 pound typewriter, yeah. it's under 10 pounds. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's a little heavier than your rocket, mm -hmm. pound heavier. And yeah. then, but put it into your satchel, carry it. Um, it's a great laptop typewriter right. because you've got the bottom the is sealed up. Bottom sealed and up. And it has six feet, not four. Right. So uh, a little bit less chance to slide around on a smooth table. And the materials they use, if you notice, that the uh, feet, even though this typewriter is from 1960-ish, yeah, about 19, right about there, you know, they aren't deteriorated. Right. That's you true. Know, where a lot of them, they're crumbling right. by this right. point That's here. True. And I haven't replaced those. Ah, it's nice. And, um, yeah. Very sweet. So it's, it seems to be a durable typewriter. Like we said, the platen is, it's stiff, but it's not rock hard. It still feels rubbery. So it feels rubbery. Yeah. yeah. Um, I love the styling, but I like that dart. It's sort of a cream-colored paint on the dart right. logo, and which kind of matches those cream colors. Yeah, I think they did that with the design. It's just they, beautiful. They really did a yeah. good design. Yeah. And and that's again what when you use it for writing, creative writing, all yeah. that. Um, and that's one important factor that everybody has to think about when I'm using this. Is it not a distraction? And if there's what I see. Is attractive so that I feel good about it. Yeah, that's true. There's those intangible elements of the writing experience. Right, and that's going to give you confidence. Yeah. And that's right. when they right. talk about you know with people with golf clubs. Oh yeah. Is that right? And all the golf clubs really, they're all pretty same, much the same. Pretty right? much the same. Yeah. You know, it's a matter of ooh, do I feel confident with this club? Oh, okay, yeah, you know? yeah. Or is it I just hit a really bad shot and I'm really upset, so I'm going to break the club? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. But and that's the thing is, I think this one gives you that confidence. You yeah. like it. It feels good. Right. And then. Hopefully, because of that, you're going to yeah. write something that's good. I would say this, in my view, this is on the upper half of the of the of the ultra portable scale. Certainly, yeah. I think so. It's one of the better ones. I would definitely say it's right there with a Sky Raider. I mean, Sky Raider is going to give you the uh, touch adjustment, right? And and uh, maybe I don't know. If, can't remember if it has the left hand carriage release lever or not. But anyways, I remember Sky Raider has the. Uh, we can see if this has it. Uh, the half space. Oh yeah. So this has a true half and space. This has a true half space. Right. So very good. So you can insert missing characters. And and that's actually more common on the ultra portables, the true half space, than it is on uh, regular portables ah. because of the design of the escapement. Ah, okay. Uh, and I'm not sure exactly why, but a lot of the uh, uh, true half space started out on the on the ah. ultra portable lightweight typewriters. Well, this and so is that's a, nice because yeah. you can actually do. Justifying text, just you can yes, insert right. of a word when right. you misspell, right. and have to add a character. Some really creative poetry, overlap in letters. Right. A bit. So you have a lot of features here. Yeah. And um, for creative writing, yeah. you, eh, you don't need a tab. That's you true. Know, you know, that's not that's, that's not true. really. You're not going to do it. Be doing spreadsheets. You're not going to be doing spreadsheets, <laughs> and you know you're going to be. Uh, 
either double space in between paragraphs, or right. you're going to do yeah. okay. I'll do three spaces, one, two, three. You know, yeah, yeah. Or whatever yeah, it might yeah, be. Yeah. And and that's and that's the type of writing. Very good. Well, I love this machine. This is great. I just the the look of this charcoal fine textured paint, and and the the painted dart logo and the. The, the, the sculpting of the of the space bar and the, and the body panels, it's just a beautiful machine. It really is. And this is one that you would always want to keep a black ribbon in. Oh, of course. A black ribbon. Yeah, yeah it exactly. just goes right with it. No, you, know, you, you, you don't want any red. The, red, red, the red would be no, would it, it, it wouldn't would, look it right. Would, yeah, that's yeah. right. That's yeah, right. Yeah, it's yeah. like putting lipstick on a pig. Yeah, exactly. You put in blue, and you go, why would I have blue? Right. Like this, I'm serious it's, with it's this It's that typewriter. charcoal gray and light uh, tan, off-white. Right combination that works really well. In fact, you'd want to be using cream-colored paper, probably. Oh, that would be great. Yes, right? cream-colored paper. Yeah. Oh, that would be perfect. Yeah. In fact, yeah, I think I've seen paper that yeah. is about yeah, that sure. shape. Use some of that nice letter-writing paper, and you got yourself a, a real writing experience. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Kevin. Thanks. It was great, and I hope you guys enjoyed this, and we hope to be looking in the future at more of Kevin's Ultra Portable Collection. Look well, forward to it. Yes. Well, until next time, you guys stay creative and have yourselves. A great day. Bye-bye. Ah, this is a great machine.